welcome back for the second time for us, first time for you guys. Uh, this is your host, Jameezy3000. If it's your first time here, like always, I'm your host. This is my channel or podcast now where I get into Funko Pops, sneakers, video games, and anime content. Uh, so if you're a fan of any of that, give me a follow, hit the like, hit the subscribe, whatever platform you're checking us out on, you know, give us that love and support. It's always appreciated. Um, today, something I've been wanting to do, podcasts. I'm trying my hand at it. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad. We're fixing stuff as we go now because uh, we did a first take. Didn't go so good. Uh, <laughs> one of my mics died out and, <laughs> and here we are now. Uh, we're back better than ever. It's for you guys. The we wonderful do, world of podcasts. Yeah, we do it for you. Uh, but in today's episode, what I got, uh, we are talking about anime. We're going to get into some anime, uh, talk a little bit about it. So if you're a fan, you're going to enjoy it. If you're not an anime watcher or anime fan, uh, give it a chance. Give it a listen. You know, maybe you do find something that entails, that intrigues you. And, you know, just give it a shot. There's there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, today, I am joined by my co-host, my cousin, uh, David C., who also has a podcast of his own, Mavs Content Crazy. Uh, Mavericks did win today, so there's that. Uh, always a good night. <laughs> yeah, always good. A good night in Dallas whenever the Mavericks win. Uh, but yeah, like I said, we're going to get into some anime. Uh, off top, let's just uh, get back into, you know, how we did in the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead. You know, you can get into introducing yourself a little bit more and animes uh, you get into or we can talk again about how you got into anime. Right. You know, um, as we uh, said a little while ago and uh, we'll keep talking about it now as you know, I, I've been an anime fan for pretty much. All my life, you know, it, it, for as far back as I can remember, of course, there were some older animes that I did watch in the back in the day that I didn't really realize they were animes at the time when I was watching them, like Voltron, like Thundercats, like some of those older ones and things like that. And definitely do the newer ones, well, I would call them newer ones when I was in my younger years, as I'm a little bit up there in age now, but in my younger years, you know, there were the animes that I really got into that got me going, ones like G Gundam with Domon Kashu, the King of Hearts, and some of the cool things that he had going on in the Gundam world, and I know it's a little bit different than some of these Gundams that are out there now, like the Iron Blood Orphans and Gundam Seed and... Gundam Wing and the, all the other ones that there are out there now. Gundam G Gundam was just my favorite and and just something that I thought that was real cool and different for the time that it came out. Man, as far as that, because um, like I said, like I like I prefaced last time, and I want to do it again right now for the viewers, uh, just to let everyone know. Uh, as far as anime goes, um, your knowledge definitely outdoes my knowledge on it there's so much more animes that you've seen especially you know some of the older ones i know that's more your taste i am a little bit more new school so to speak um but i'm still a fan nonetheless i still have a great great love for anime but uh i want to talk about what you just brought up right now uh gundam i know that's definitely an older one obviously you've seen it you love it i haven't seen it personally i do know of it uh, but I kind of want to break down that a little bit, dissect it. Tell me about, I guess, walk me through it. The different types of Gundams or arcs or, you know, I guess, because you got Gundam and then what is it, Gundam S or, or what? Yeah, just give me the whole, yeah, yeah. Well, the whole thing. <laughs> there's, there's so many of the Gundams, but in this one, it was, you had the master is what they called him. And the, the master who taught the main character, Domo Kashi, who was the king of hearts. And he had the... What was it the burning Gundam? I believe is what he started off with in that one, and he kind of evolved from there. But it was in, set in a world where basically every country had a Gundam. Okay. And it, whichever country's team won the Gundam fight would basically take over the world. <laughs> That's essentially what it was. And it was the United Nations of, of all these countries that are, are duking it out, and whichever country wins the Gundam battle gets to rule the world until the next Gundam battle. And, hey, that's probably not a bad way to do things now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a big Gundam battle is the best way to figure out who just needs to be in power. Who's right going to be the boss. <laughs> but, you know, it was pretty cool to see it like that because you had, like, and, and the way they changed up the names, you had Neo Japan, Neo USA, Neo, um, what, was, what was some of the other ones that were in there? 
They had, what was it, one that looked like a snake, one that looked like a dragon. There was just, all through all the different countries that they had, um, I think that they had one who was a boxer, I think out of England or something like that, and, and the Gundam actually looked like a boxer. It actually had boxing gloves on, which was pretty hilarious, but it was cool to see it in that way because it was just a different way for me to look at anime back then was, was just the Neo different things, I guess. Gotcha. So for those that don't know, like I said, if you're not an anime fan, what the Gundams are is basically just big mechas. Jig, yeah, big <laughs> mecha robots that are that are doing the people's bidding. They and like you said, they come duke it out and the winner reigns supreme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you ever seen Mega Godzilla? They're like his little cousin. That's pretty much what, what Gundams were. <laughs> so so basically the winner gets to call the shots until there's a next winner. Right, right. And of course, the twist that they threw into this was Domo had an older brother who was in control of the Dark Gundam. And the Dark Gundam basically had, was nanites. It would, it would absorb other things and consume matter and just grow itself and become more powerful. And in this one, you thought that his brother was the main bad guy and all those kind of things. So they were always trying to fight it out. And he was always just trying to stop his brother from taking over the world, basically. So it was, it was just cool to see. You know, for me as a younger kid, at that time, like I said, this was probably 1996, 95, somewhere in there. Right. Where, of course, the anime wasn't anywhere near what it is now in the animation styles and what they could actually do. So the action sequences were in the world of uh, Voltron and things like that, where you got a couple of sword slashes here and there, and maybe yeah. some cool looking stuff. But the action sequences weren't the best in the world, so it was cool. Because um, like a lot of the stuff back then, everyone had to have a catchphrase for every attack that they did, kind of like Power Rangers and everything else. It was you had to call out the name of the attack before you did before it. Before you did it. <laughs> for whatever reason. And uh, the, the King of Hearts probably had the best one on that. So it was pretty cool to see. Not bad. That's definitely um, one that's on my list uh, to watch and check out. Because like I said, I, I haven't seen it. There's a bunch of older ones, obviously, I haven't seen coming up. You know, we, there's a little bit of a age difference between you and I. Um, so there, there's Same a bunch. <laughs> there's a bunch you've seen that you love that I haven't had a chance to see. Um, but I know your your taste in anime is you know from what i've seen nothing but great um especially from the the one recently you recommended to me as cryed uh that i've started watching i haven't finished it yet i've probably made it uh because each disc probably has like five episodes more or less i've watched two discs full so 10 episodes give or take um that's how far i'm in it but that's definitely a dope one that's something that kind of speaks to me as far as the style, the animation, the story that's going on within it. Um, I do enjoy, like I said, even though I'm more of the, the new school stuff, I do enjoy those older ones, you know, going back and, and seeing stuff like that. It does give me that nostalgic feel. And I overall, sometimes like them a little bit more, even though some of the newer stuff is, you know, might be more techni uh, technically advanced or, or whatever it is. You know, the, some of the older stuff is stuff that catches my eye. Um, I know you're obviously more... Of the old school stuff, there's not too many, not too many of the new ones that that you like. Yeah, you know, as I said, I I am a an elder statesman at this point, and I do have <laughs> a 14 year old daughter who watches a ton of anime. She's she's uh, just like her dad. She she's definitely into anime, and she watches a lot of these things, and she watches a lot of this newer stuff. And I just can't quite understand it. <laughs> <laughs> call me old, call me what you want. Uh, it's a lot of this stuff has a lot of high school drama and a lot of high school uh, related issues into a lot of these newer animes and things like that. And right. uh, I, I just have, in my old age at this point, I, I find it a bit more difficult to get into watching high school drama anime, if that makes any yeah. sense. It's, it's, it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, some of them, they are funny, though. I'll give her her credit. Some of these things are funny. Like, I know she's tried to get me to watch show one of the newer ones, uh, Food Wars. Um, but... In the realm of a lot of these newer animes, it's trending in the hentai-ish category right. where it's just a little disturbing for me. Yeah, I know that was a, a big thing kind of me and you have uh, talked about before, you know, just in our regular conversations. A bunch of the animes now, especially in this the, the newer school stuff, there's a bunch of sexualized stuff, you know <laughs> what I mean, more, more or less, um, which for everyone watching, that's not... 
everything anime is about. <laughs> there's <laughs> there's plenty of other stuff that that doesn't have to do with sexual stuff or super long huge fight scenes. You know, there's there's always something for everyone. Um, something that that kind of goes kind of hand in hand what you're talking about as far as the new stuff. Uh, there is one. It's a Netflix original that I've seen. Maybe you've heard of it. Uh, B stars. Have you heard of B stars? Yeah, yeah. I, I did see it on there. I didn't. I didn't give it a chance. The yeah. type of animation style that it has is that Netflixy animation style. Yeah, and it is. And and that just kind of irritates me. <laughs> yeah, man. I actually, on the other hand, I gave it a shot. I I watched it. Um, I did. I liked it. I kind of like it now. It, it does go kind of against the the grain of, of what you're saying. It, it is very much set. It is set in high school. You know, <laughs> there is there is high school drama. And basically what it is, it's you have these um, animals. It's regular animals. You know, like we have the regular animals here, species, lions, tigers, wolves, rabbits, dogs. You know what I mean? But they're all kind of humanized. Everyone walks upright and, and talks. And the thing is, it's called Be stars And that's kind of what these high school students strive to be the next B star, um, which is kind of just like being a, a Kim Kardashian, basically. <laughs> you, you're you're going to be famous for being the sake of being famous and whatever comes with that endorsements or whatever it is. Man, you know what I mean? Need more Kim Kardashian. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the lore that, that kind of got me or why I liked it or what I took away from it, man, honestly, uh, it's more or less uh, about a love story. It's a love story. Uh, you got the main character, Lagoshi. Uh, he's a wolf. And in this setting, in the world, obviously, um, animals eat what they eat. But it's illegal for the carnivores to eat meat. So he's a wolf. He can't just go kill this rabbit or, you know, go whatever and and feed. So they, they more or less have to be vegetarians you know what i mean so we got zootopia take it to the max take here. it take it to the max this is this is a real life real deal zootopia um but the thing about it he he falls in love with with a rabbit and his his instincts tell him everything you know it's, it's his prey he's got to eat it and man for for those who haven't seen it i don't want to spoil it too much if you do want to check it out but man and, and and everything aside he he really goes the links for this this person that he loves you know what i mean i'm talking about against his instincts um she gets into some super bad situations and he's there um it it, it, it was overall a dope story that i liked um early on i will say this early on in the season like i think the first episode someone does die so one animal kills another animal like they eat them and like i said it's illegal to do that so they kind of leave that part a mystery it, it happens in the high school. Someone gets eaten, and then everyone's trying to figure out who it is. I've watched all of season one. That's that's all that's out right now. The second season should be coming out uh, sometime this year, but nobody knows who the killer is, which it still has that kind of, I guess, mystique to it. But um, in the sense of, of the things that I know you like, you probably still wouldn't like it because there, <laughs> there, there is uh, still a bunch of sexual tones and, and stuff like that. It's very much... Yeah, and don't get me wrong. I'm not a prude by any sense of the imagination <laughs> here. I'm not saying that I wouldn't watch anime that has it because <laughs> most of it does. It even, does. Even some of the ones that I'll bring up that I like so much and have, you know, I've been a huge fan of. Obviously, most anime characters are drawn a certain way, especially if you're a female. Right. There's, there's no getting around it. They're going to be drawn that way, and that just is what it is. But just some of the sexual overtones are just a little too strong in some of these newer high school ones. And, and then again, and the more that I think about it, it's probably a good thing that I'm not into some of these high school animes. Cause if I was, that'd probably be a bit of a problem <laughs> as a 40 year old man, basically. <laughs> if, I, if I was in a high school drama and girls, there'd be a problem. So I'm gonna go with that's okay. I'm going to leave that to my daughter to be more into those check them, out, yeah. things like that because there are some things to take away from it. Yeah. And there are some things for probably someone who is in high school who's going through they some can, things yeah. that they can take from it and, and kind of relate from it. And that's where my love and passion for anime comes from. Mine comes from storyline, from purpose behind some of the anime. And I think I've told this to my daughter a few times is I don't like pointless anime. I like anime with purpose. With the purpose, and, yeah. And, and a lot of the stuff that I really liked and, and loved growing up and one that we just talked about uh, was S. Cry Ed. Right. And S. Cry Ed came to me in a time of my world when things were just about as hard as they could be. 
you know, without putting too much of it out there, I, I had run into a difficult time. And without some of the scenes that the main character had in that anime, and one of them that I'll go ahead and say right now, his quote is, once you've decided, once you make your choice, don't hesitate. Once you hesitate, it spreads to others like a plague. Once you choose, proceed and keep on going. And once I heard those words, when you're in high school and you're going through the most toughest time of your life, you're down and out. You got no one backing you. You got no one in your corner. But yet you're hearing that on a daily basis. Yeah. Push through. Break through the barriers in front of you. If there's a wall in front of you, well, guess what? You just push it down and move forward. When you hear those kind of things at a time in your world when you're down and out, they can't help but inspire you. And when I heard those words in my younger years, and like I said, I think Escrayed came out in like 2000 or 2002, somewhere around there. Yeah, right around there. And without that anime, I'm not going to lie. I probably wouldn't have graduated. Right. You know, as funny as it is to say that, and some people would be like, ah, that guy's crazy. It's true. (laughs) It really is. I can honestly say that that anime helped me get through high school and actually helped me graduate. So anime can be taken so many different ways. And while I am probably uh, a little bit more harsh on some of these high school animes, they probably have a lot of meanings in there. They can really help out some of the younger generation that's out there. True. Very true. Uh, to kind of get a little bit more, I want to. I definitely want to talk more about S. Cryet because, like, when you brought it up to me, like I said, I had never heard of it. Obviously, I appreciate going back and, and watching it. I do enjoy it. Uh, but for anyone else that's watching, um, because I did have, whenever you did tell me about it, I had someone else like right in right in my mind that I thought of that is uh, another big anime fan. So I went to them like, "Hey, man, have you ever heard of S. Cryet? And they're like, "Nah." You know, I was like, well, you need to hear about it. (laughs) So just just to go into a a little bit more of that and, you know, kind of dive a little deeper into S. Cryed for those who haven't heard of it. Give us just like the basic premise or or setup or how you would, I guess, sell it to to someone who hasn't seen it yet. Okay, so basically, if you wanted to look at S. Cryed that way. You're looking at basically two sides of the of the railroad tracks, right? Right. You're looking at Kazuma, who had nothing, grew up in nothing. All he's ever had in his world that was ever actually his, that he could call his own, was his ability. His, his al- altar power. His altar, yeah. His altar was his. And in this anime, for if you haven't watched it, what their ability is, what their power is, is what they call altar power. And what it's doing is it's altering the environment around them to either directly influence their ability to do something or create a a substance or a a being or even a weapon of some sort that can fight for them. That does their will, basically. Exactly. And sometimes it can even be a a whole other being. Right. Uh, As I said, Kazuma is a body harmony alter, meaning he's altering his right arm. And the best thing about it is just the action sequence of it all is... Say, for example, if I was that main character, if I wanted to alter my arm, I would make this table disappear right in front of me and alter the components of the table into Into my arm arm, to be the weapon that I want it to be. And that's basically what alter power is in this. Kazuma is, is like I said, a, a guy who is from the wrong side. He's doing bad things, but hey, that's his life. That's just what he has to do. Right. And then you have the other main character of the anime who's Ryoho. He sees everything in a straight and narrow line. Yeah. Everything's you're either doing the right thing or you're doing the wrong thing. And he follows the rules and does everything the right way. Yep. But he's also an overpowered character. Yeah. <laughs> For anyone who knows anime, you know exactly he, what that is. He definitely is. <laughs> he's insanely overpowered and he can crush everyone in this anime. But Kazuma does not like the fact that he gets beat by this guy in probably the third episode, I want to say it is, second or third episode, Cosmo gets beat by the straight and narrow Ryuho, doesn't like it whatsoever, and then from that moment, his wall is Ryuho, and he's going to get through that wall no matter what. And so that becomes his sole mission, his sole purpose is to beat Ryuho from that point forward and and keep living his life the way he wants to, and he's not going to let no one tell him otherwise. Yeah, and speaking of, that's something... Another good point I think you brought up that I kind of wanted to use to to branch out a little bit. Um, these, you know, the main characters, you know, they, like you said, they, they do what they do. They come up against the wall. They figure out a way more than likely to beat it, overcome it, you know, however they got to do it. 
Um, and I think what a lot of people miss uh, whenever they they hear the word anime or, or think of anime for people who don't watch it, um, man, there's there's a bunch of, of meanings and, and lessons and, and stuff to be taken away from a bunch of different animes, whether you do like those action packed ones or, you know, you like the mystery ones or well, whatever it is that whatever type of storylines or, or things you get into when it comes to anime, there's so much stuff packed into into these these shows and stuff that that people can learn from and and ultimately kind of grow with you, you know what i mean oh yeah and, th and that's the best thing about anime now is it reaches so many different people in so many different ways and the fact that there are so many anime now right. because as we know in the earlier years and you know 90s and earlier even 2000s prior to Funimation growing and, and becoming the thing that they are now, there just weren't very many animes around. There, there was very little to no dubs. If you were lucky, you could find something out there. But for the most part, you were dealing with uh, just very selected uh, watching as far as what anime was out there. But Funimation changed the game. They came in and started dubbing everything yeah. <laughs> and, and made all the anime that was really inaccessible to everybody you know, accessible for everybody. Accessible, yeah, definitely. Um, speaking of going down the line of, of Funimation, something we have in common, um, Dragon Ball Z. We love Dragon Ball Z. It is a product of Funimation. Uh, it's like a like I mentioned on our on our first take. Nobody got to saw. Uh, <laughs> it was my introduction into anime. You know, uh, Dragon Ball. I, after watching Dragon Ball Z. You put me on a Dragon Ball Z. I went through, watched it. I loved it so much. I, I went back. I watched Dragon Ball from front to end. Um, man, maybe a little bit more of an unpopular opinion. I like Dragon Ball better than I do Dragon Ball Z. But I, I just, I love the whole everything as itself so much. You know what I mean? And and I can't tell you how many countless times I've seen Goku come up against, you know, a, a, a villain or the, the main enemy, still find a way to do it, overcome. And, and I'm like, man, that's sweet. You know what I mean? That That's that's something I want to apply to my everyday life. I want to go out here and do my best or whatever it takes, you know, just get over that hump and, and you know, kind of go about it, go about life in that fashion. Yeah, you know, Dragon Ball Z was one of the first ones that I just I got into very intensely yeah <laughs> it was it was so ridiculous to the point where we were literally recording every episode on VHS <laughs> we would rush home from school hit that record button and then wait for the rest of the brothers to get home before we were allowed to watch it because no one could watch it unless we were all together so we would record every episode and then watch every episode together and that was our, you know, first first love as even brothers in our younger years all watching that kind of stuff together. And and Dragon Ball Z, as we kind of said earlier, is just such an amazing anime in so many different ways. It was an anime that somehow kept your attention while giving you nothing for about a month. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they would draw out episodes for so long and leave you with a cliff cliffhanger, somehow the same cliffhanger that lasted for an entire season. Uh, as we talked about, you had an entire season, and if you have the box sets, you know this, you have an <laughs> entire season of just the fight with Raditz. Yeah. And I'm not sure how you made that into an entire season, Dragon Ball Z writers, but you're awesome because you did, and we all loved it, and we all watched it, and it was it was cool to see. They really, they really stretch it out. And for those, again, for those watching that are, not super into anime or maybe our younger audience. Um, we're talking about a time, you know, back in the day when, when it would just come on TV. You know, we, we'd watch it. It'd come on that week. And then we had to wait a whole nother week for just the next move this dude was going to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whether they're, they're powering up the whole episode and then right when he's about to shoot off that beam or whatever he's going to do, episodes ended. You know, find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> that like, narrator was just, man, that guy got his money's worth. He did. He narrated <laughs> the heck out of Dragon Ball Z pretty relentlessly. Yeah. After <laughs> every episode, at the beginning of every episode, it was uh, that awesome narrator doing what he did. So that guy definitely earned his money yeah. uh, in the Dragon Ball Z world. But it, it was just, there was so much with Dragon Ball Z that was going on. And, and when that time was happening, when we were recording, that was somewhere around the 97, 96 timeline, somewhere around there, 
and we got so into it that once the Frieza and Namek series ended, we had no way to watch anything here right. in the U.S. anymore. There was no episodes of anything anywhere, and the only way we were able to continue watching was off a tip off from a friend yeah. to wake up at 5.30 in the morning and watch Dragon Ball Z on Channel 23. If you're, if you're not sure what that is, you're not from uh, Texas or Dallas, that's the Spanish channel, <laughs> Telemundo. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I learned my poquito Spanish was by waking up at 5.30 every morning and watching Dragon Ball Z so I could watch the Android saga that happened after the uh, Namek saga because there was just no other way to watch it in the U.S. And thank you, Channel 23, for giving us something other than novelas. <laughs> they got it right <laughs> the one thing they got awesome and and it was it was just amazing because there was nowhere else to find it and the fact that they even had it in the u.s was was pretty cool back then because it wasn't like now where we could pull open a laptop or my phone or any other device that we want right now right and just start streaming anime yeah we had such limited resources there was only so much we could go off of and really during that time Cartoon Network was sure is really it. If you weren't able to watch that it on Cartoon it. Network, you're pretty much out of luck. Yeah, that was those were the times to do it. Um, late hour, yeah, I remember personally being up late night waiting for, you know, Adult Swim to come on after regular Cartoon Hours was over. You know, everything's done with. It's Adult Swim time. You knew when you saw uh, Toonami Tom's ship float in and you saw him walking <laughs> through or, or doing his narrations a little bit. Uh, that was that was cool too, uh, but you knew it was anime time. You had the Inuyashas, you had Dragon Ball Z episodes, and everything else that entailed with it. Um, what what were some of your favorite animes? I guess from from that period. From that period, well, you just named one of them. Um, Inuyasha obviously was was definitely <laughs> one of my favorite ones. And if anyone, and I'm pretty sure if you're watching this, you must have watched some of the episodes from Adult Swim back in the day. Right. And the insane commercials that they would run pretty much nonstop after midnight about Inuyasha. And it was basically just Inuyasha and Kagome just saying their name back and <laughs> forth for about 30 to 45 seconds. And they would just have different clips of them standing up and calling out to each other. They're calling down their names out to try to save each other. And it was just a funny, funny little commercial that they had. And... I remember watching that late night and uh, some of the older stuff that I don't think people even knew that was even airing back then, but like Aqua Teen Hunger Force right. and uh, Robot Chicken started airing about the same time. This was a long time ago. This was yeah. uh, when they first got started. Now, everyone's seen them later on in the years and we're like, oh, okay, Robot Chicken, that's funny. I was like, well, it was a bit more uh, <laughs> out there when it first came out. When it out, first came on. Sure. <laughs> But those those were like the, the late night lineup that they had. And, and Inuyasha was one that always stuck out to me because just the, the the fighting that they had in his sword and being a half demon and half human type thing. That was yeah. pretty cool to watch from Inuyasha during that time. Um, but there was so many of them. Full Metal Alchemist was going on. The original. Let me say this again original let them know yeah not brotherhood like i said like uh, like i said before on our on our first take that, that you know people aren't going to get to see because the audio died out but it's fine <laughs> it's fine we're, we're back um you're more for the original brotherhood is like how you mentioned before it's more fast paced it's it's not so much the actual storyline the the details you know putting in uh i guess how i would look at it just the, the time and effort to you know watch this and grow with some characters type of thing. Yeah, for me, and, and what I told everyone, and when I look at Brotherhood and when I look at original Full Metal Alchemist was, if you watch Brotherhood, you're looking at Full Metal Alchemist and fast forward. Right. They're skipping over some of the story to give you the action, which yeah. is fine. Yeah. If, if you're more into action and action is your thing, it, it's good. It, it's, if you love that, that's 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 more, more power to you. Right. I got no problem with anyone who loves a lot of action because Dragon Ball Z, I mean, Dragon Ball Z, Fulmino Alchemist <laughs> Brotherhood gives you that. It gives you the, all the action sequences you could ever want and probably some that you were missing in original Fulmino because it was more about the story. The story, line. yeah. They didn't give you the awesome fighting scenes that you probably did get in Brotherhood. Right. So I can understand that point of view as far as people who like that. But me, I'm old. I like story. Yeah. I, I love the in-depth things behind it. And they put a lot of time and effort into making characters and then making you have some of emotional attachment to those characters yeah. before they just for you game of thrones them and kill them all off yeah you know they, they don't they, they don't 
give you that opportunity in brotherhood. They just kind of quickly go through the whole thing. And all right, this person's dead now. It's like, well, okay. <laughs> that was just a side character who just ended up dead. Okay, who cares? But they didn't give you that emotional attachment. They gave uh, one episode in original Full Metal Alchemist called Night of the Chimera's Cry. If anyone doesn't care to watch the entire series, watch, that's fine. Watch that episode. Just watch that episode. And tell me that some of those little heartstrings don't get strung while watching that episode. If you did, you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm, I'm telling you even watching that i'm not a big emotional person i don't generally cry yeah but i, I felt a little something my, i got a little chalked up a little bit after yeah. watching that episode and didn't want to look at my daughter had to turn away i didn't want her <laughs> to see my face because it was just that good it, yeah. was, it was just that emotional and that those kind of scenes are what always gonna wrap me up in anime gotcha and man scenes like that i'm i'm kind of the opposite i i'll get emotional watching an anime if i'm if i'm binging and it has that good story you know, and I'm, I'm sucked in. If, if something happens that, that kind of resonates with me, man, I'll get a little teary eyed, you know, <laughs> um, uh, speaking of, if anyone's watching the, the video feed of this versus the audio, I got a, a pop right here, Deku in a onesie. Uh, are you a My Hero fan? Yep. Yep. Definitely. So on one of these scenes, um, you know, obviously he, he's born without any powers. He wants to be a hero, you know, in, in a world of heroes where you're either born with the, with the quirk or not. You either got a power or you don't. You know, he runs around in, in the onesie, uh, wanting to be All Might. You know, that's his his thing. Um, and on the scene where he's like, you know, having a flashback, you know, where he's running around in the onesie as a kid, and he's like looking up on what is there YouTube, you know, in the in <laughs> yeah, the anime world, is. looking up All Might scenes. And his mom comes by, and you know, she's looking at him, and she knows he doesn't have any powers, and like he's looking at the mom all teary eyed, like, can I be a hero? And <laughs> You know, when he's flashing back in this memory, he's like thinking to himself, like, man, mom, I just wanted you to say yes. You know, just give me that reassurance. I think his mom tells him no. She did yeah, tell she well, tells she him no, tell right? Him no. And it's, it, it's, the, it's stuff like that. I'm like, oh, man, just just tell the kid, yeah. You know what I mean? But Instant I, dream crusher. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, man, terrible parent. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it's stuff like that. Like I said, I'm, I'm the opposite. I'll, I'll, I'll get into these if, if I'm sucked in enough and I'm in it. You know, I'll I'll let those those tears go by. You know what I mean? Uh, my, my daughter would tell you I'm pretty robotic. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they, they think I have no emotions mm -hmm. a lot of times, and that's why even during that full metal scene, I, was, I couldn't even show it. I had to look away. Had to look that, away. That way she didn't see it because, like I said, that, that, there was just so much emotion wrapped in that, and that was that was the only reason. And I know I've gotten into a couple of. Uh, debates let's call them that with people online when it comes to brotherhood and full and regular full metal but as i said everyone has their own niche and what they like right and, and for those who love action brotherhood your thing brotherhood or work but for those if you just want pure epic story because when i talk about all these anime and all these anime we name off here i love full metal i i, I watch so many s cry Ed is probably my number one of all time just because of that what it did for my life at the time. What it means to you. Exactly. But right. for me, the best written anime, well written, best written of all time will be original Full Metal. Okay. Just because of the entire storyline all put together, it all lines up and the way it all falls into place. It just kind of blows your mind. Yeah. <laughs> it really does. I know I was blown away week after week, seeing every episode on Adult Swim because that was the only place to watch it. And, and seeing all the stuff come together and the way that it was, I mean, I was, I was sitting in front of the TV and my eyes were literally popping out of my head on some episodes like, did that just happen? Right. And, and it did. <laughs> and, and, and some of the stuff out there was just amazing. And, and those are the things that I always take away from it and, and are always the best for me. Man, full, so just to clarify between Full Metal and Brotherhood on Adult Swim. Which, is that the one they showed, Full Metal, the original? The original one is the one they showed uh, on Adult Swim late nights. Now, I think okay. they did show Brotherhood, but... Wasn't until years yeah, later, later. I'm later. 15 years later when okay. every Brotherhood came out. Because that, that's the only time I remember Full Metal from is when I would watch it, you know, as a kid on those those late nights, you know. And it wasn't um, it wasn't Dragon Ball Z, so it wasn't one of my main focuses. But if it was on, I watched it every now and then. But um, there was there was a bunch in there that I liked from, from Full Metal as well. That's one I definitely want to go back and watch because I know, for again, for anyone who hasn't seen Full Metal or know what it is, you got the Elric brothers, um, and they end up are getting into practicing uh, the shows about alchemy, right? Yeah. The practice of alchemy, uh, which is basically what changing 
substances or uh, the the chemistry matter of them or, or whatever it is. The alchemic makeup of, of, of all matter. Right. So they're in full metal, they're able to manipulate that matter at will, but only in the equivalent exchange value. So in order to obtain something of equal value must be lost. So if they're trying to reform something, then something of that same value they got to give up. And the same elements, basically, they got to use. Gotcha. So, and speaking of, I know you got a little trinket there. Is that right? From the show. Yep, yep. If, I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is actually the pocket watch uh, from the show. Uh, on one of the box sets that I bought, it came with it. And in the show, when they leave their childhood behind, basically, yeah. they decide that they're going to go and, and work for the state and just leave all their past behind. They burn their house down. And in order for them to remember everything that they left behind and where they're trying to go, they etched the date in which they left their house and burned it down. So that way they had nowhere to go back to. Yeah. And that's how, and they, and they were little kids. I think yeah. in the show, they're supposed to be like 12 or 13 Thir years yeah. old. But at that time, they somehow decided that we're not kids anymore. It's time to move forward as grown men. We're going to burn our house down. So that way we don't even have a fallback to come back. Yeah. To. We were moving forward and that's what we're going to do. And that's, you know, that's the best way to be. If you're going to do anything is, Hey man, if you're going to go into it, you might as well jump all in. Kind of like we're way. doing now here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's, um, uh, again, for those who haven't seen the show, like I said, you got the two brothers. Um, which one is the older brother? Uh, Edward. Edward. He, Edward. Even though he looks smaller. Yeah, he's he's the smaller <laughs> one. That that's one thing that's kind of deceiving or off-putting because you got the smaller, and then the other one is basically a big. He's just a suit of armor. A, a suit of armor because <laughs> because what is soul, it? His soul. Yeah. Is attached his to armor. his younger brother. Um, that, what, does he die or? What it is is they tried to resurrect their mother. Their Episode mother. Episode one, right off the bat, yeah. they tried to use alchemy to bring their mom back. Yeah. But as we said, it goes in back. alchemy, it's equivalent exchange. So if you're trying to bring a soul and a body back from somewhere, you need a you got to give up a soul and a body in exchange. So gotcha. when that happened, in order to keep his brother alive, instead of letting his soul get taken, he learned some alchemy somehow, like really fast. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, he drew a sigil onto a suit of armor that was laying in the corner. And attached his brother's soul to that armor. To the suit of armor. So now there's this huge suit of armor that's always walking around with him. But yeah. it's got a little kid's voice, little yeah. soft voice, because it is his little brother who's stuck now in this armor. And that's pretty much what the whole story is, is them trying to get their, their, their his brother's whole body back right. and his right arm and left leg back. Because he, he loses that whenever he does... He does yeah. when, In order to bring his brother's soul back, he gives up his right arm and left arm. Yeah. And, and left leg. Correct me if I'm wrong. In order for them uh, to, I guess, pull off what they got to do, you know, to, I guess, you know, set things back to how they were or whatever, they need to find one item. Correct. They the, need to find the Philosopher's Stone. Philosopher. I don't know why I kept thinking Sorcerer's Stone. <laughs> and I'm, the funny part is, is that was actually uh, written down in actual history. The okay. Philosopher's Stone is just something you can actually go look up right now. And that's it's, probably one of the coolest things about Full it, Metal. It's a it's an actual thing. That is, they have plenty of things based in actual reality. They have plenty of things. So, so for example, the, the guy who's in charge of the military, his name is the Fuhrer King Bradley. Right. Who do we know is the Fuhrer in history? Hitler. Uh, Hitler, yeah. It is Hein Fuhrer Hitler. Yeah. He is the Fuhrer. You know, that was who, who he was at that time. So in the full metal world, the Fuhrer King Bradley basically rules it in that same way. He yeah. attacks who he wants. He pretty much does what he wants. And you're not really, I didn't really put those things together until the very end of the series when they kind of brought it more into our world. Right. Where they brought some, some stuff happens and they kind of show an, an image of our world and they show like the difference between, between us and their full metal alchemist world and how it, how it, how it all plays out and how technology works here versus not so much over there. So I thought that was just pretty cool how they tied it all in together. And they actually even had a movie uh, that's tied in with actual history. And they actually used people from the, uh, the Reich during that time, as far as the names of the characters. Oh, dang. <laughs> so they, they did a lot of history in their stuff. Yeah, they they yeah. put a lot of work into it. And uh, there's actually a horror movie. Uh, I'm not sure if you ever seen it as above. As above, so, so below. below. Yeah. 
That's Lo- the stone I love that, that we're looking for. Okay. That's the red stone. She even says it at the very beginning of the movie. We're looking for the philosopher's stone. Yeah. Not very many people caught that while watching yeah. that movie. Honestly, that's what looking for. I was today years old when, <laughs> <laughs> when I when I put that together. I didn't know that till you just said that. <laughs> so yeah, I've seen that movie. I love that movie. I love the the premise or the whole thing behind it and what they're looking for. I didn't know that's that that's what they called it till <laughs> till you said that right now. Yep, yep. She was she's looking for the philosopher stone because she wants to attain a power that she can't do unless she has that stone because she has to use alchemy to do it. I always thought that was um especially since you you know refresh my memory on it right now, that's one of the cooler elements of this show in particular. It, it ties in with some you know, real world stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, and like I said, there's just so much stuff, and we could I could go on forever just talking about Full Metal because of the story and then the actual history that they tied into the world, but, you know, there were so many of them that were on late night, like I said, Full Metal, S. Cry Ed, all these were on during the same time, and if you wanted to stay up even later till about 3 or 4 in the morning, you got who, Yu Yu Hakusho that was yeah. waiting on you super duper late super if you late. wanted to stay up and watch that. I think I went to sleep one time and woke up at 4 in the morning, and I think that was the very first time I ever seen, if you ever seen Yu Yu Hakusho, uh, Kurama, the, the, the pink haired guy in his original fox demon form. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was a dream. Like I literally like, woke <laughs> up in the middle of the night and I seen it and then I went back to bed and then I woke up the next day and I was like, did I see that guy turn into an awesome demon? Thing? Like, <laughs> now I gotta rewatch that, man. Now I gotta, what was that? You know, and, and so now, I, from that point on, I was staying super late up every weekend to find out what the heck that fox thing was. And, yeah. And it ended up being Yu Yu Hakusho, which another just ridiculously awesome anime. And that's one I, I vaguely remember too. Now, tell me that's that's set more in a more spiritual kind of thing setting right correct correct it, well it's uh you had this one little i think he's even supposed to be in junior high i don't even think he was in high school you yeah. know the main character yusuke yurameshi yeah who was in junior high and that's the guy with the green yeah he green, wears a green little i guess school uniform i guess is what it is yeah uh and then he has his uh i remember his uh his main attack was he'd, he'll shoot a little... Yeah, the spirit gun. Yeah, so basically, yeah, yeah. when he dies, his spirit's real strong. So they say, hey, we're going to bring you back to life only if you agree to become a spirit detective. Yeah. Who hunts down bad spirits and, and things like that. And it, it grows from there. He meets some awesome demons. He has a good buddy of his on there who's a moron. But he's... <laughs> he's, he's He's still fun to watch in that anime, but then they bring in the other players, like, you know, one of the guys who was one of my favorite characters ever was Hiei, and he's just a demon who's dressed in all black. He has a third eye on his forehead. And Did he have black hair? Yep. Like yep. black with a little bit of white in it? Black, yeah, black hair, but I think just because of the, the shimmer that they tried to give yeah, off yeah, of it, yeah. it always looked like there was some white in his hair. Yeah. But the dragon of the darkness flame. I mean, how awesome is that, man? I mean, you can walk around saying that attack all day. That just I sounds think I dope. Walk around saying that to my brothers for no particular reason all the time. Dragging the darkness flame at you, but you know, because it, it was just so cool. <laughs> yeah, how, could, how could you not like that? It was just another awesome anime that Adult Swim had at that time. Man, yeah, that's definitely one I got to go back and check out. So, speaking of, you know, just kind of these, you know, reminiscent animes, real quick, um, I want to kind of just run down if you can oblige me hit me with your just your top five top five favorite animes top five so number one favorite all time as we just said it's cry it it's okay. has got to be sitting at the top always number one full metal alchemist comes in a very close second original not brotherhood <laughs> um uh, that comes in second and then i would say after that of course dragon ball z you know the original well hold on let me rephrase that Dragon Ball everything. Dragon Ball everything. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, even though not that many people liked it. I yeah. still did. Dragon Ball Super, you name it. I loved it. I think I have the box sets to everything I just named. And uh, I loved them. As a matter of fact, all my boxes make a big old dragon uh, next to each other. If you look at the boxes all next to each other, they line, they line up, say Dragon Ball Z, and have a big old dragon on the side of them, all the, all the box sets connected. So that was pretty cool. Nice. I had to have that in the collection. Uh, that took me some time to actually get, but hey, it was well worth it back in my younger years. Um, and then the last two, I, there was so many, so many to choose from as far as the last two that I could have picked. But I had to go with uh, one of my just favorite characters of all time, and that's uh, Ichigo Kurosaki from Bleach. From Bleach. And I'm actually him every year for Halloween. Yeah. I have the entire outfit. <laughs> I have the shihancho, which is the, the robe that they wear. 
I have his Bankai sword and his Shikai sword. I have both of them. <laughs> and I have his hollow mask. So I literally have the entire everything. And the funny part is, is I walk around with this huge actual sword every year for Halloween and nobody really pays me any attention because they think it's fake. So it's, it's pretty funny. Uh, I dare someone to come up and try to take my kid's candy. <laughs> Uh, they're going to get an Ichigo sword right in the chest. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I've always been a huge fan of Bleach just because of his character. Ichigo has just always been kind of cool. It's a slow building anime. Right. So that's really hard for a lot of people to get into. When you first watch it, it's just about him and some spirits and him trying to beat these evil spirits and kill them or whatever. And then it, it kind of evolves into the whole spirit world and all these kind of things. The most ridiculous part is, is I could probably name off to you every single character in that show right now, along with their powers and their, they each have their own squads. I can name you their squad members too, and they each of their powers. What I do with all this information, I have no idea, but <laughs> I got it all, you know, so <laughs> uh, might as well talk about it. Um, and then, of course, last but not least at the top five, uh, Naruto. Naruto, there you go. of course, I caught it. Naruto's all the way to Shippuden because <laughs> you know Naruto again and kind of in the same as Dragon Ball you know there's you had Naruto regular and then you had Shippuden and the original of course went on entirely too long with about 400 episodes of nothing going yeah. on in regular Naruto because everything literally happened in Shippuden like nothing happened in regular Naruto other yeah. than we seen he had the fox in him yeah that's about the best we got out of that and then every action, every good scene happened in the Shippuden. So still awesome, though. But those round out my top five. Although I'll say it was ridiculously hard to get those last two in there because there was just so many other good ones out there. Man. And there are a bunch of good ones. So many. Yeah. <laughs> so many. I mean, just to name a few more, uh, Kogias is, is another one that's not as well known out there. Right. But... I think is one of the more well thought out anime, kind of in the same realm as Death Note. Okay. Death Note, as you know, if anyone has seen it, a lot of thinking, a lot of a thought lot, process. A lot. I love Death Note. So much thought going into that anime. And Kogios is in sort of the same realm. Don't get me wrong. It's it's a mix of everything. And that's what I think makes Kogios so unique. Right. Because they have Gundams in there, or Mechas, uh, or if you want to call it that. That's in Code Geass, but you also got the thought process of a Death Note because the main character is a genius. Yeah. And he's trying to take down an empire by himself, basically. And all he has is this one power. He achieved this one power from a witch. She gave him the power of absolute uh, compulsion. So basically, he can give you an order and you have to obey you gotta it, do it no matter what but he can only use it on you one time yeah so if he ain't told you hey you have to listen to me forever well guess what now you're gonna listen to him forever so he found a kind of a loophole yeah. through that <laughs> or he could tell you you gotta hop on one leg every tuesday at three o'clock and you'll just do every it. tuesday at three o'clock you're just gonna go out there and do it go back inside and not even have any memory of what you just did because you're not supposed to remember that kind of yeah stuff. So, once again, a guy literally trying to take over an entire empire who's, that empire basically rules the world, and his only power is being able to control you once. Once. That sounds like if anyone was going to do it, that'd be the guy. <laughs> so, it's just another, another, another cool one out there, and it just, uh, there's just so many, so many of them out there, and we got one sitting here right in front of us, you know, my hero. My hero. And, and, and some of the awesome stories that they have in there. And that's another one that gives a lot of inspiration. Yeah. You know, All Might and, and everything that he says is real inspiring. You know, I, I can't, I don't know if anyone could ever watch some of the, what he says and says, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think that's happening. You know, when you hear All Might talk, you're, oh, I think I want to stand up a little bit too and yeah. talk like All Might. You know, it, it just puts that in you a little bit more. So, and that makes it uh, real fun. Uh, one that's probably not as well known, but I just like the take on the devil in it was D. Gray Man. Okay. I'm not sure if you've ever seen that one. I haven't. D. Gray Man is one set in a world where they have exorcists. Okay. So kind of like Bleach, exorcists are meant to deal with bad spirits, right? Right. But the way every bad spirit is formed is because, say for example, uh... I, I don't even want to say it like this because I wouldn't want to wish and knock on a million pieces of wood before I say it. Um, we had a family member of ours who was extremely close to us. Um, something happened to him. Right. 
you know, they, they pass or whatever. Well, the Millennium Earl shows up, which is a cool name in itself. The Millennium it Earl will show up to you. As soon as you said that, I'm like, damn, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> and he looks cool. He almost looks like the penguin from, from the old Batman drawings, like okay. the old penguin with yeah. the suit and everything, yeah, yeah, with yeah. the umbrella and everything, because he's got an umbrella too, the yeah. Millennium Earl that he carries around with him. He shows up to you, and while you're at your saddest, while you're at your darkest moments, wallowing in your sorrow, he shows up out of nowhere and says, curse that wretched God for taking that person that you love so much. God's such a bad person for doing that to you. I tell you what, I'll bring them back for you. Mm -hmm. And then he brings out this creepy skeleton looking doll thing, Mm -hmm. imprints the name of the person that you want to bring back and says, just call out their name with all the emotion that you have in your heart right now. And they'll come back. You do it. They come back. But what you bring back is a soul now who did not want to be resurrected. Mm. A soul that was in peace. A soul that had already passed on and it was good in its world or wherever it was. Right. And now has been drawn back and thrown back into this skeleton, creepy looking thing. And now they feel pain. Now they feel sorrow. Now they have it all. And usually the first thing that thing does is kill the person that brought them back. Yeah. That's always the first thing that they do. Damn. As soon as they come back. Kill the person that they, that brought them back, and then now they like, keep going along, just killing more people. Yeah, and and it evolves from there because those souls can get stronger, gain more power, to become level one, level two, whatever. It goes up to level four, I believe, in, in that, as far as power levels go for the spirits. But it's pretty cool. Alan Walker is the main guy. His arm is like some creepy, uh, I don't even know what you would call it, uh, stretchy <laughs> claw thing. <laughs> but with that. Thing, he evolves and it just becomes real cool but i just thought that was a cool take on the devil you know someone who yeah. just pops up out of nowhere kind of catches you, know, you at your at your saddest you know at your lowest and like hey and i think anyone can relate to that yeah anyone anyone in this world if you've lost someone you can relate to wanting them back right and if you had this creepy dude pop up out of nowhere and just tell you hey i'll bring him back for you you know i don't worry about being sad you're yeah. probably going to do it. <laughs> yeah. There's going to be that, that ounce in you. Yep. And then he takes your soul away from you just as soon as he brings back your person. So it's just another cool one. But there's just, just so many. I mean, like I said, I could go on forever because I got so many that are <laughs> in my head and so much that I watch. Gotcha. Uh, getting back uh, into more anime stuff, obviously. Um, let's talk about two good points you just brought up right now. You brought to my attention. Um, Hunter x Hunter. Let's talk about some Hunter x Hunter. Uh, I know the general consensus for everyone that is that is a Hunter fan that has seen a Hunter x Hunter. Uh, there's a bunch of people that were, I guess, uh, you might have been in the same boat before, you know, I said what I said, which I'll say it again right now in just a minute. Um, it kind of it kind of made it to a point, you know, er- everyone loved it. I haven't met anyone that watched Hunter x Hunter and didn't like it. I, I love Hunter x Hunter. It's definitely... Uh, in my top five as far as animes go it's one that i I definitely love i've only seen it like a couple years ago is is when i first saw it uh but again it's one of those that only goes so far uh i haven't made it to the end yet because the platforms i watch it on have only went to a certain point but i know after that when it you know actually when there's no more episodes like i said it, it only goes so far and i think the the general thought of it or or what i gathered it kind of stopped at a, a weird point or is, it's, it's kind of like in, in limbo like it's just kind of you know yeah it's, it, it leaves you at a point where you're literally saying what the yeah because why didn't anything happen <laughs> because <laughs> why would you literally stop it because it was so good and they had finally brought in some other characters that you're like okay yeah now they got some more stuff going on here and then they just ended it and it was like okay Okay, like, why would you even show me all those other awesome characters if you weren't planning to do anything so, with them? Obviously, I haven't made it there, but is it, does it just kind of come to like a, an abrupt halt? Like it just stops sudden out of nowhere kind of thing? Yeah, it literally leaves you thinking that another episode is coming. going to come. <laughs> because it's, it's finally uh, two people talking at the end and they're like, okay, well, they're talking. And, but then they also said this other stuff is going on. They even make mention to this whole other world that's out there and it's a lot bigger than what they've already been through that they've only been through such a small portion of what the world is because 
I'm not sure how far you got into it. If you ever got to the Chimera Ant arc. So that is the part I, I got to. That's the part I got. I, like I said, I haven't finished the whole arc, um, but I made it to the point basically where the queen has made the, you know, her, the whole thing she was trying to do. Uh, yeah. She, she makes the king. Um, uh, I made it to the part where, you know, they start abducting humans to, to try to make more of their species or whatever. Right. Um, I've also made it to, we're pretty much, uh, gone and, and Kilua link up with, you know, uh, the dude they play dodgeball with the, the main guy. Um, he's like, I guess, the, no, 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 no. Uh, the, they play dodgeball with them when they're trying to get their hunter license. The, oh, okay, the, okay, the old yeah, guy yeah. with the little ponytail. Yeah. The uh, razor. He's, oh, no, no, no. You're talking about the other guy. I'm talking about like the, I guess he's the leader of, uh, the fuck, uh, the hunter association or, oh, or okay. Nitro. Is that his name? Yeah. Yeah. The chairman. Yeah. The chairman. There you go. Chairman Nitro. He, he's, he's, uh, from what I gather is the best. Oh yeah. He's insane. He's yeah. He's, he's the best. <laughs> so I, I haven't made it. I've seen clips. I think where him and the King like at one point meet awesome and, and they have a fight. Right. Awesome so fight. I haven't made it there. Uh, but I seen where, you know, the chairman, he pretty much assembles his, his group of people that he wants to go and infiltrate and, and try to take down these, uh, chimera ants. Um, and he's, you know, he's got his buddies and Kilo and Gon are there and they get into it. And, you know, everyone realizes, you know, the, the king is, he's a bad dude. Oh, yeah. And not only that, he's got, you know, his, his goon squad too. Obviously there's, there's tears to the, the things they, that they got going on, yeah. but his, like his immediate underlings are cold too. Like I know everyone was afraid of, um, uh, the, the girl looking one like that, the, 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 yeah. Uh, cause they, they mess up, uh, kite, they, they get a hold of kite. They, they do them bad. And oh yeah, she takes his, yeah. And I, <laughs> she takes his head. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm at the point where, uh, I made it to like, they, they know that, you know, he's, they've got him or whatever. And they're like, their mindset is we're going to go get them back kind of thing. That's Kilo and Gon's mindset. But yeah. that, that's where I made it to. Gone believes he's uh, still alive. Still so, alive, so yeah. All he wants is to go back and get him. And and that whole thing, man, you stopped off at a point where you got to keep watching because yeah. there's so much that keeps going on there. But what, what I was saying, the way that it ends is they basically give you the information that the Chimera ants were an invasive species, mm -hmm. that they actually come from one of these other places in this whole other outside big world that exists outside of what we've already seen just in the small scope of kind of like another Hunter Hunter. another rabbit hole to exactly so they they basically say that everything that we watched to the point uh, of the Chimera ants and everything was just a small portion of the world just very very small because Man. there's so much more out there so many more monsters and things like that and that Everything that they literally just went through was just ah, that's just, just basically training. Just to get a, you to yeah, just be a fraction of be. it. <laughs> so the reason I, I again wanted to bring this up, not only do we love this anime, and like I said, a lot of people, I guess, kind of had that feeling like, man, it just stopped out of nowhere. Um, I saw, I don't know how reliable the source is, so don't quote me on it yet. But <laughs> I, I did see it um, where there's rumors where they're supposed to be bringing it back. They're supposed to be, I don't know if it's immediately, you know, picking up where it left off, but I did see, um, like a real deal. It's a chance they're, they're going to keep the show going now. I hope they really do because it, it would be kind of a pain for me to watch two shows that ended the same way because of what I was talking about Bleach earlier. And as much as I love Bleach, they're barely supposed to be coming out this year with the final arc Man. and Bleach <laughs> aired forever ago. <laughs> like it literally aired forever ago. But they're barely going to come out with the final uh, Thousand Year Blood uh, blood War arc uh, coming out later this year. And, of course, I'm waiting on pins and needles for that to come out because I've been I've read all the mangas. So I've already seen everything that's going to happen. I already know what's going to happen, but I just want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it in form. You want, you want to see it? Voice. You want to see it in action. Yeah. <laughs> so that that's definitely going to be uh, uh, fun there. But. Yeah, it was just kind of disappointing when you when you have a show like Hunter x Hunter that put so much thought into it. Because right. they did. They put a lot of thought into everything they did. Yeah. And it was so much fun to watch it because it had so much comedy. It had so it much uh, thought process behind it and everything else. So for them to end it the way that they did was so abruptly. And for the crazy fans like myself who were just like, 
huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't understand what just happened. Man, that would be so exciting for them to bring it back. If I could get Hunter X Hunter and Bleach in the same year and get to finish both of them, man, I, I would be dancing. And I might show you. <laughs> <laughs> and that, I think that's definitely one thing, um, especially for dedicated anime fans, uh, something we get to both enjoy and kind of is a, a bittersweet ending when an anime does end because for animes they stretch out over such a long period of time you got this saga you got this arc you know the the storylines to them versus if you're just watching a movie reading a book or you know whatever it is it's it's right then and there you get your hour and a half movie or whatever versus an anime where it's real deal a journey you know that you get to watch and most of them you you grow with these characters and uh, get that development with them and you know you, you get attached to them yeah i think a lot of people who try to down talk anime and say certain you know negative connotations about it i would always challenge them to watch it right and, and take whatever thoughts process you have out just just throw it out the window whatever you think about anime get rid of it just forget about it for a second and actually watch something with S some story. Sit down and watch it. And when you do, it's going to change your mind because everyone always has that same, like you said, as we said way earlier in this pod, was everyone has that notion of what they think it is. Right. Oh, it's just cartoons. Oh, it's just Bugs Bunny. Oh, it's just some porn looking stuff. It's yeah. all this is that. But it is, there's so much more to it. In, in the grand scope of things, there's just so much to anime that if you were to give it a chance... I would compare it and put it against any popular show out there. Yeah. Any regular mainstream show on NBC, ABC, ESPN, whatever. I don't care. I'd put it against any one of them, some of the top anime out there. And if you actually gave story versus story a chance, I think most people would sway toward anime. Yeah. I, I would, I'd be inclined to agree. Um, but in, in the same breath of, you know, and the longevity of things, another anime I wanted to bring up with you, uh, One Piece. One Piece is a very long, <laughs> very long anime. Me, me personally, myself, I like One Piece. I enjoy it from what I've seen. I'm not even halfway through. I'm very early on in One Piece. I've... I'm not far at all. <laughs> I'm not far at all, but I do like it. I do like One Piece. I remember watching One Piece when it first came out, when it very first aired on Cartoon Network. I remember watching all those episodes, and I'm sure I watched the first two seasons or whatever it was, and then um, I, I know I fell off of it for sure. Um, and then I'd seen how many episodes that there are now, so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go back and I'm give this go, a yeah. try again. I need to. I need something to binge on in here again. So let yeah. me go back and watch some One Piece. There, no, there's, I, I, I can't do it. There's I, like, <laughs> yeah, because there's like, uh, for those that that don't know, for those that do know, man, congrats to the people that have finished it. <laughs> but for the ones that don't know, One Piece uh, is a story of pirates. That, that's basically the setting of it. But there's like 400 episodes, over 400 episodes. And if I'm not, is it still going? Like they still have I, I episodes? I think it is. I think I still see clips like uploaded all over the place. I, about I, yeah, it. I think it is still going. So if anything, it's like one of the longest running anime that I know of that's still currently, you know, being made and, you know, stuff like that. But man, it's good. <laughs> yeah. It is good. It's just hard to go back and rewatch because if I have to watch another place, a person talk about Arlong the pirate, I'm, I'm just going to fight somebody <laughs> just because. Through those first two seasons, I, I can't say how many times I just heard that name. It was like, oh, it's Arlong. Oh, it's Arlong. Like, wait a minute. How, how long is this season that we're still talking about Arlong? Can they not just beat the guy and move on to the next enemy? <laughs> I would be very happy if that happened. But it just, it's just too long. It's yeah. just way, way too long. It is. To, to sit down and, and watch it, you really got to have some, some time or just some real dedication on you. I got, I think, like the first 200 episodes on a, a box set, DVDs, <laughs> and I only got them um because at one point in time i booked and took a tour of the funimation facility in flower mound oh wow yeah you can hit them up and you know do do a tour there it's not a big a big place the whole tour itself maybe took 30 45 minutes if that that's pretty cool yeah though. yeah you go to each department you go to this department they introduce you to some of the workers that work in that department they tell you what they do how they do it and then they're open to questions um, and we stopped in one of the, uh, editing departments where the, where the guy makes, um, their commercial pieces, uh, like he'll put together a 
a few clips. He'll match up the sounds. He's an audio engineer, obviously, and, uh, you know, do the, the commercials for it whenever they advertise these animes. Um, and we happened to be there. It was just me and my one buddy. There was supposed to be another group there. They didn't show up. So it was literally just me and my buddy, and we walked around this place. So he's Look. the guy I had to thank for the insane 30 to sec- 45 second yeah. Inuyasha Kagomi clip. <laughs> <laughs> but while we were there, um, he was looking at us. He was like, man, uh, you know, do y'all like uh, One Piece? I was like, yeah, man, I like One Piece. He's like, man, you want this? And it was it was the set, the DVD wow. set. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I want that. Of, <laughs> of, of course I do. He's like, do you see where I'm at, buddy? Yeah. I'm standing right here in front of Yes, I want it. <laughs> you, know why, you know why I'm here, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, I think so. it's just, it's been cool, man. Just over the time, as I said now, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, inching toward 40. Don't tell nobody. Um, <laughs> YouTube. Uh, but... <laughs> I, it's always been a huge part of my life, you know, and yeah. everything that I've done, there's always been some sort of anime that's always been around and to have my kids now even involved into it and, and see, see how it's diversified and see all the anime and all the different stuff that's out there now. And there's even stuff, like I said, I couldn't begin to watch, but you know, my daughter loves. So it's just cool to see all the way that the way as anime has evolved has has been fun over the years. It's definitely come a long way, uh, especially now, like, any other streaming service, Netflix, Hulu, whatever, you know, Funimation has its own app that I have on my phone, you Crunchyroll. know, Crunchyroll, which Funimation just bought out uh, Crunchyroll. Oh, wow. Yeah. Add it to your channel. Yeah. So, <laughs> Hurry up and add it to your app, all the rest of those Crunchyroll stuff. I don't know how they're going to do it as far as like merging the two catalogs and stuff, but Funimation did in fact buy them out. Um, but uh they, it's it's definitely something that's becoming, uh, after all this time, something that's more and more mainstream. I think a, a lot more people are starting to get into it and, you know, starting to give it a chance. You know what I mean? And hopefully anyone watching or listening, if you fall in the category where you haven't, you know, hopefully this has persuaded you, even in the slightest, go, you know, go give it a chance. Find Find something that you're into that you like like i said if it's any main storylines or or whatever it is something that you enjoy there's going to be an anime out there you know for you absolutely man you know there's some for everybody all kind of stuff good stuff bad stuff Um, (laughs) which i don't have very many ones that are out there that i wouldn't like I, i will say one before you know we we end this or whatever um there is one just anime in particular that I know a lot of people are fans of, but I will never be a fan of. Lay it on me. And that is uh, Devil Man Crybaby. Okay, never heard of it. Don't. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. People do like it because I've seen it on a few lists of top new animes. But okay. to me, it's not an anime. It's a hentai. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you're into hentai, go check out go check Devil out. Man Cry Baby. If not, and you're just an anime fan, just, just stay away from it. Leave it, it alone. <laughs> let him cry in the corner and let him stay <laughs> over there. <laughs> all right. So after all this, we got one one recommendation to stay away from. <laughs> 30 million to watch, one that's not watch. <laughs> <laughs> so we gave you a whole episode, obviously, on anime, something we both love and enjoy. Um, like I said, if, if you guys haven't, you know, definitely give it a chance and then we'll leave you just with the one not to watch. (laughs) (laughs) Stay away away from it. Uh, but we'll, we'll wrap it up on this one. I think we're pretty good on time. Um, but yeah, that'll be this, this episode. I don't know how frequent or often, uh, we'll sit down and do this. So definitely anyone that's made it this far, leave some feedback, uh, what you guys think of the the setup you know the whole thing we got going maybe some topics you guys want to see on on future episodes stuff like that you know any feedback positive negative it's welcomed um and we'll take it and run with it but that'll be it for this episode again episode numero uno number one and then uh signing off we'll see you guys on the next one see you later ah (laughs) gee